Christmas is a great activator for receiving downloads and it's also a great test for those that are on the awakening journey, on the ascension journey, on the cell growth journey because if you're on the cell growth journey you will be tested. Are you going to stick with the habits that you've set out for yourself in order for you to grow, in order for you to level up? Are you going to stick to your spiritual awakening journey when you are around people that are unawakened? And are you going to remain in a state of love and peace when you're surrounded by people who want to bring trauma and conflict your way? So it is a powerful time because it really is an opportunity for you to prove to yourself that you are committed, that you mean business, that you are aligned with this new frequency, that you are who you say you are, not for the rest of the world to see, but for you to truly believe it for you to truly embody that new energy, that new version. So there have been a couple of channeled messages that might be useful to somebody. Yes, Christmas is a highly corrupted holiday. If you think about the origins of the holiday and what it represents today, it has gone through this massive shift where Christmas is all about the consumerism. And yes, maybe there is some sort of darkness around this holiday that has also been uplifted if you consider the magic of the holiday and that we're wearing these um, Christmas merchandise um, items that help us preserve the magic because some of the oldest versions of the fairy tales that we love today they are really dark but if you think about the origins of Christmas there might be some darkness there that the storytellers over the years have transformed into magical experience for the children, for the people that want to preserve that sense of magic. So try and find some gratitude for all of these fairy tales and these movies and these songs that we have that are able to bring us in a state of joy. Because yes, there is a lot of darkness in the world, there are a lot of wars, and some of the connotations regarding Christmas are very dark. And maybe, we have this sense of oblivion around this holiday, but be grateful that there's also magic that has been preserved over the years, magic that has allowed us to believe in something that is far greater than just going and buying items and just serving our primal needs, so to speak. And if we were to go down the rabbit hole, think about the spelling of where Santa Claus is coming from, lap land. So the land where you sit on somebody's lap. And we can go down the, the path of monarch programming and make MK Ultra, but take a moment to detach from those for a day, for a couple of days. Take a moment to just appreciate that you get to experience the human experience and that you get to have little trinkets of joy, little items, little gifts that allow you to feel like a child, to, to feel, um, to, to remind you of what it means to experience being on earth, experience having a family, experience having parents and grandparents and, and children and cousins and all of those titles because it is part of the experience. It doesn't Just because you've awakened to a, a different dimension, a different reality, doesn't mean that your human experience is less valuable. It has taught you many things over the years and you've had many wonderful moments. Maybe some of them were illusions, but they also were part of the experience, part of the human experience. And so if you are on the awakening journey, on the ascension journey, and you have karmic family, karmic friends, meaning these are people that are not yet to awaken, meaning that these are people that would rather remain in the 3D programming because that is, you know, the choice that their higher self has made for them, that it's not their time to awaken just yet. Your purpose in their lives, if you are still connected, if you're still choosing to remain together, is not for you to push them or punish them for not awakening, it's for you to see how you can bring some more joy, some more empathy into their lives. Because if you remember what life was like before you awakened, there were some limitations. You were in a prison chamber of your own. 
where you felt like you only had a certain amount of choices and you realizing that there are more choices and more versions of life that you can experience that is bringing you a sense of freedom, that is bringing you a sense of liberation, that is bringing you a sense of self-empowerment. And those that haven't yet ascended to the level that you have don't feel that. So the way that they're acting comes down to their trauma, comes down to that prison that they're still preserved in. And to them, that is protection. To them, that is safety. That is their comfort zone, but to them that really is that sense of self-preservation because their self maybe is fragmented, their self is confused, their self has a lot of illusions and a lot of veils, but their higher self hasn't chosen for them to awaken yet. Or maybe it has given them the, the call, but they haven't answered the call. So it is not your job to go and tap people on their shoulder and get them to wake up and shake them and be like why aren't you awake yet it's for you to find that acceptance and find that surrendering that you are exactly where you are supposed to be because maybe something that you say in a conversation is going to help somebody come to terms with finally making that choice to search for more meaning and having said all of this Think about what it means to be human and think about how you can change that version, how you can create something new in terms of the way that you talk to people, in terms of the way that you create your art, your business, the way that you show up in conversations, the way that you show up in gatherings, the way that you organize events. How can you leave your authentic imprint into everything that you do? Maybe your purpose on earth isn't necessarily to awaken 1 million people, but to impact the souls of 100 people. Imagine you got to connect 100 people in your community to their higher selves, which is gonna shift the course of their life and their the life of their future generations for generations to come. That's not 100 people, that's not 100 souls, that's 100 families. So whatever you do has an impact that is far greater than just your immediate surrounding. And when you feel like you're not doing enough, know that you are. And when you feel like you want to shake people and get them to talk about the things that matter the most, when you show up and you bring your higher self into the conversations, when you bring your presence, your gratitude, your energy of joy and abundance, that is already making a difference. So thank you for being part of this journey and for believing because you are already changing the world and try to bring that sense of joy into everything that you do, especially as you're moving between the two worlds of the 3D world, the 3D life that you lived before your awakening into the 5D life that you're experiencing that you cannot fully share with certain people. You are always exactly where you're supposed to be. And if you feel uncomfortable in certain situations, it's probably because you're outgrowing them. And if you feel that you cannot find peace in certain relationships is probably because you're outgrowing them, but there is a part of you that has something to learn, some final lessons to learn or some final goodbyes to do in terms of your own internal programming. So sit with that uncomfortableness, but try to also find gratitude and joy for simply being alive and adding these experiences into your library of experiences that is called the database of your consciousness.